Alright, so funny story. When I was about 15 years old, my friends and I thought it'd be funny to do the whole um, Johnny Knoxville style um, doing stupid things and harming your body type thing. And my friends videotaped me riding my bike into an empty pool. And we thought it'd be funny. And um, I got about a yard head start pedaled twice, and then went directly into the pool. My face hit the cement floor. My wrist smashed against the bottom of the pool. My eyebrows, like, hanging off a little bit. I don't know if you can see the stitches right there. Uh, this is an example of using self-deprecating humor in your storytelling. Now, whether you find that funny or not, well, it's up to you. But this video is all about how to use different types of humor to tell your stories. Enjoy. So the thing about using humor is you don't have to write a story that's a comedy to have humor in your story. Even some of the darkest tales have elements of humor in them. And good writers know that humor can be used as a valuable tool. Like I said, it doesn't have to be like a silly Adam Sandler type story. For you to use humor, it could be imbibed in a character, or a plot twist, or maybe just a small moment in your story. Humor can be a valuable tool. Here are some ideas for how you can implement humor, and this is uh, taken from a website called um, f and I have the copyright at the bottom there. But this is talking about something called the K rule. And the idea is that the K sound, words with K in it, or that K sound, um, have more of a funny punch to it. Um, same thing with a hard G. So words like guacamole um, have a sillier sound to them. So you can actually create characters who have these sounds in their names. For instance, um, in The Simpsons, there's a character named Krusty the Clown. Um, for whatever reason, that sends a signal to your readers that something funnier is going on when you add those harder to say sounds, K's and G's. This is a classic rule of comedy. It's called the rule of three. And if you watch stand-up comedy, pay attention because you're going to see your favorite stand-ups use this rule of three. So the rule of three is that this pattern of two pieces of setup followed by the third thing being a punchline is something that helps the brain identify a joke. So the way this is stated according to this website is um, you write comedically to establish a pattern and then misdirect the reader with the punchline. The simple way to do this is to pair two ideas in a list and then add the third idea, which is silly, absurd, ridiculous, whatever. So, the rule of three is a good way to use comedy because it avoids overusing a joke. I'm sure you guys have all friends who overuses a joke, he says it too often. Three is a good kind of benchmark here. So, here's an example of the rule of three. Losing weight is simple. Eat less exercise more, so those are the two normal things, and then the third is the punchline. And pay NASA to let you live in an anti-gravity chamber. So that's more absurd. The idea is that it trains the reader to think in this pattern, and you can use it in dialogue with your characters, in the narration. Um, it's a great flexible way to incorporate humor or comedy. Um, here's something called the comparison joke. And it's um, another way to, if you struggle with writing humor, uh, a great way to implement um, something more silly, perhaps, or something more ridiculous. So as writers, we're comfortable with, it's like a metaphor joke, basically. Um, think of comparison jokes as simply metaphors chosen specifically for their comedic effect. 
So this example is uh, from a memoir called Cancer on $5 a Day, Chemo Not Included. Um, I'll let you guys read it on your own. You can pause the video. I don't feel comfortable swearing on this. But um, to craft a comparison joke, you have to brainstorm metaphors and find one that is the funniest. So if you would normally use some sort of dark metaphor to describe something like death or describe something like uh, the weather, you might think of using a more absurd comparison. For example, if you want to convey that quitting smoking is difficult, you might first mentally list things that are tough, such as reading without your glasses, flossing a cat's teeth, getting a teen to tell you about his day, and getting a cat to tell you about his day while flossing his teeth. Then simply choose a comparison that makes you laugh. So maybe the flossing a cat's teeth image is one that conjures up some sort of silly humor. That's a great thing to throw into your story. If you're adding some humor, it can be a good way to kind of, um, if you have a mostly dark or serious story, to throw this in there. Fourth tip for adding some humor to your story is to tell a funny anecdote or a story. Uh, this is a great way to implement some humor in a way that is less jokey. It's kind of just like telling a story that has humorous elements. Um, this could be a character telling something about their background, or maybe you're revealing something about a character's background through telling a silly story. I started this video by telling a little anecdote about my past that I thought was humorous. Uh, think of things that have happened to you that are silly or funny or happened to somebody else, and then you know how to tell a funny anecdote. This is going to be good. So here are some types of humor to consider when you're writing, and you should pick a type of humor that you're comfortable with, comfortable using. Not everybody finds something funny that you would find funny, and vice versa, of course. For instance, I love Stephen Colbert from The Colbert Report. I know that not everybody does. But depending on your own personality, you can use one of these types of humor. There are more types, but you know, these are the types that I think are most common. The first type, sarcastic or ironic humor. It's when you're saying one thing, but you mean something else. It kind of keeps people at arm's length. It makes you seem like you are a cooler type person, someone who's aloof. Sarcasm is when you see someone with an ugly shirt and you say, uh, that is a great shirt. Where did you get it? You don't mean what you're saying? That's sarcasm. There's dark humor, and dark humor is humor that revolves around things like death. Making jokes that are about things that we choose to ignore in our daily conversations. Things, um, for instance, about, you know, horrific crimes. People who um, use dark humor usually maybe have a darker sensibility. And uh, they would probably be connected more to people like uh, Tim Burton who used dark humor in their stories. Um, there's plenty of examples of dark comedies. Um, C is self-deprecating humor. That's what I started the podcast or the um, video with. Self-deprecating humor is when you use yourself as the punchline. Usually, embarrassment is the source of the laughs for this one. Silly humor is more absurd. It's more childlike, and it's um, usually takes more bizarre images or bizarre circumstances things that are outside of normal um, silly humor you would think of like Spongebob Squarepants for instance. Finally satirical is Stephen Colbert's style of humor and satirical is when you are using humor to point out something that has gone wrong with society and you're usually using over exaggeration. So Stephen Colbert is making fun of the um, egotistical um, news host. He's not actually like he is in the show. He's satirizing that way of telling news. And he does so through over-exaggerating things. That's my favorite type of humor. But you may find yourself um, in the silly, self-deprecating, dark, sarcastic, ironic camp. Um, whichever one you are, try to use some of this in your next story.